Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Hey, thanks again for tuning in to Growing in Grace. I'm Joel Brzezinski with Mike Kapler, and this is indeed the Growing in Grace podcast going on almost 10 years here on Growing in Grace. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a couple of weeks, uh, but it's just amazing to see what the Lord has done over the years as uh, people are made free through the grace of God and His love and mercy and all these wonderful things about Him, uh, so we never tire of talking about this good news, do we, Cap? Well, I hope we don't tire of it. Wouldn't that be kind of a weird <laughs> thing, to tire of the gospel? <laughs> I'm so tired of the gospel. No, I don't want to talk no. about that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> There's just something wrong with that picture. So, yeah, that, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Hey, good, good to have you listening, though. We appreciate you being here with us. And thanks for those of you who have been offering some correspondence and sharing with others that this podcast exists. We are here for one reason and one reason alone, and that is to encourage people in the gospel, the good news, to help you to realize, to help all of us to realize the unconditional love that came from God through Jesus Christ and the peace that has now been established between us and the Lord. You know what? Sometimes we have this desire to share this message of life in Jesus Christ with others. And sometimes it's hard to do. It's hard to go out on a street corner for most people and do that sort of thing. It's tricky at work. Uh, even sometimes just having a casual conversation with some friend of yours can be awkward for many people. But one thing you can do, you can let them know about our podcast and say, you know, you ought to check these guys out. They're not really all that religious and you're, you're, you could really use some encouragement. And I, I think you'll really like what you hear. We have people out there doing that and it has changed lives, and we're just humbled to be a part of that. So when you have the chance, growingingrace.org, we've got all the programs archived with the newest ones listed first. Yes, that's a good place to go, uh, and, and indeed, it's easy to remember. Share that, growingingrace.org with people. All the podcasts on there, you can listen via MP3, and uh, also we've got it posted on YouTube as well, although you can't see us there, but the audio is posted along with the, the show's logo. So... Uh, on uh, what you're talking about there, you know, people like to share this message. And so in, in the church, there's this thing that's kind of crept in uh, legalistically where people feel like they have to witness, like they have to. It's a spiritual discipline. They need to get out there and witness. Now, I do know that some people enjoy going out there, like you were talking about street corners and things like that. Some people really do enjoy that, and that's what they're called to do, and, and they really do enjoy sharing the message of the gospel with people in that way. But some people feel like it's something that they have to do, as if, it, as if it's part of our identity in Christ that we have to be witnesses. And so we're here to we'll talk a little bit about that this week, because uh, I, I hope that we can free some people up to um, just have a more natural lifestyle with the Lord Jesus, in which it's, it's a more natural thing to share the love of Christ with others, rather than it being a legalistic thing. Absolutely. And that's what my point was a few minutes ago, is that, because it's just something that's built into us to want to share this sort of thing. It's, it's like mm -hmm. giving, Joel. I mean, loving others. I mean, I'm not saying we do it perfectly, but there's, there's something that we've received in, in this new nature of ours, this new life of Christ that dwells in us, to want to do those kinds of things, whether it's sharing our faith or giving to others, helping others in need. And, and so on. But this word witness does appear a number of times in the scriptures. And for those of us who have been around evangelical Christianity or things like that, it's a word that's been thrown around a lot. And the problem here is it's one of those words that has been misunderstood. And words have meaning. And, and I think sometimes when we misapply words in certain situations, they lose that meaning and that importance of, of what they really stand for. So this thing about being a witness, <laughs> a witness is somebody who has seen something or encountered something firsthand. They didn't get it passed on to them. So 
Joel, if, if there was a car accident down the, the street here as I'm traveling down the street and I, I witnessed that car accident, I'm there. I'm firsthand. I saw it directly. I'm, I'm a witness to that event. And I could tell you about it, but that wouldn't make you a witness, would it? Right. Okay. Right. So the disciples, some of the apostles who were there when Jesus was on the earth and they saw him after he rose from the dead, and in some cases, they, they talked with him, they ate with him, they drank with him. They were witnesses. They were actual eyewitnesses to what went on. We, you and me, are not witnesses to that. And so we, we use this word, well, let's, let's go out witnessing. Or, you know, we're called to be witnesses, those kinds of things. And, and then the, the terrible thing about that is, since we are not witnesses, some people think that they were born to be a witness for God, that it's a part of their identity in Christ. Some people think that witnessing is something you go out and do, when in fact, being a witness is just communicating something that you actually encountered or saw. Yeah, I mean, we do get the idea in the church today that this term has crept in, witnessing, we're going to go witnessing. You won't find that phrase in the Bible, go witnessing. Uh, you won't find anything like that where Jesus commanded people to go witnessing. Here's what Jesus actually said, and just, just listen to this. Uh, in Acts 1.8, uh, Luke is writing in, in Acts, of course, and w w the Holy Spirit had, had promised that a, a certain thing would happen. And so here's Luke writing, and he talks about Jesus. And Jesus said to them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now, was Jesus talking to every single Christian who ever lives? Well, every single Christian who ever lives was not a witness to that, was not a witness to Jesus, <laughs> wasn't a witness to what Jesus is telling them to do here. Those disciples right there, those apostles, those people, whoever Jesus was talking to right here, they are the ones who would be witnesses to him because they had seen him, they had walked with him, they had known him. Uh, they would be his, his witnesses, witnesses to what they had seen in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. The apostle John writes about this in 1 John at the very beginning of the, of the epistle, he says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled concerning the word of life, the life was manifested, and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you. And so what John is saying there is that they had seen Christ. They had heard him. They had looked upon him with their eyes. They had handled him. Con you know, concerning the word of life here, his life was manifested to them. They had seen it. They bore witness to that. John wasn't saying, Jesus told us to go be witnesses. <laughs> He was saying, Jesus said, you have seen me, you've been with me, now go share this with other people. Go witness to what you've seen. That's really what that was all about. It wasn't a, a general command to the church, people everywhere, to do this thing called witnessing. Yeah, and that's not to say that we shouldn't proclaim the good news. Exactly. We should, mm -hmm. but we're not witnesses. In fact, staying in the book of Acts here, um, I, I know you got into 1 John, but uh, you started out with Acts. And, and in Acts chapter 10, when Peter went to see Cornelius, remember when Peter had that vision, that dream, the things that he could not touch under the law suddenly became lawful for him. And Gentiles were on that, that list of things to stay away from. And so he went over there and he, and he explained to these Gentile believers what a witness was. And here's what he said. He said, we, we disciples, or people who were disciples at that time, we who were there, we are witnesses of everything he did, in the, Jesus did, in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. Now get this. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses mm -hmm. whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. So even though you and I may not be an actual witness, we can 
and should share this message of the good news <clears throat> with others. But the point here is don't get your identity mixed up as being a witness. A, a witness is not part of your new identity in Christ. It does not define you. And it's not something you go out and do. Like we said earlier, a witness is somebody who witnessed something. I mean, they, they actually saw something occur. It's not something that we go out and do. I'm, I'm going to go witness. What? <laughs> what? Well, we, we've, turned this, <laughs> we've turned this thing into a verb, and it ought not to be. Exactly. You know, again, going along with what you're saying, that indeed we do want to go out there and preach the gospel and share the gospel with people. Paul had talked about this, you know, for, for if I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast of, for necessity is laid upon me. Yes, woe is me if I do not preach the gospel. And uh, it wasn't that Paul was under condemnation if he didn't preach the gospel. It was that the love of Christ compelled him. This is such good news. How could I not go out and share this gospel with people? So that's when he's what he's doing is he's loving he loves people so much that he wants to share the gospel with them. But he's not Paul never called himself a witness. He didn't say I'm going witnessing. He didn't say any of that stuff. <laughs> he just said you know, he just willingly and lovingly wanted to share the gospel with people. And so that's what he did. But yeah, that's in the end here what we want to do is help us all to remember that witnessing or witness is not our identity. You're a witness when you've seen something and you go and, and you and you share what you've seen. What we do when we preach the gospel or share the gospel, we're sharing a message. And and yes, indeed, each of us have had perhaps some sort of an experience with Christ. We know that before Christ found us, man, we were in we know what sort of shape we were in in life. We know what he's done in us, and we can share that with people. That's great. That helps people to see what God can do in people's lives. But that's not our identity. That's just something that we uh, willingly uh, get to do. So there you have it. It's just one of those little things that has got mixed up in religion where we use these words like witness, witnessing, witnesses, and we apply them to us when they really weren't meant to be. So if you're one of those people who feels like being a witness for Jesus was somehow a, a command that you weren't able to keep up with, or that this was somehow a part of who you were supposed to be in Jesus Christ. It's okay to want to share the good news, don't get me wrong, but don't feel like you're somebody who has to go out and try to be a witness when you weren't there to witness firsthand exactly what occurred. Well, moving on to something a little different next week, uh, talking about the uh, Old Covenant and the New Covenant. Are we supposed to mix these two things together? Do we live by a little bit of both? Well, the writer of the book of Hebrews gives a pretty good case about how the Old Covenant was weak, useless, and unprofitable, and how it's been made obsolete. <laughs> and so when we mix these two covenants together, which the church does a lot of, and we're really not supposed to, but it brings so much confusion and condemnation in the church and so we'll talk about that next week on growing in grace and hey in two weeks we're going to be celebrating our 10th anniversary of the growing in grace podcast so thanks for tuning in and thanks for telling a friend as well this has been growing in grace with mike kapler and joel brzezinski heard online through various internet sources around the world each week to access hundreds of past programs visit graceroots.org Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.